Canada's greatest living statesman, our own beloved Premier, Premier Ernest C. Manning. Mr. Manning. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Huck, and friends, this has been a night for memories. Many of those memories have been expressed, but during the evening I'm confident that all of you have relived in your own thoughts many of the incidents and events that have marked the course of this unique movement since its origin over 30 years ago. I don't know how you feel, but my feeling at this moment is that the, perhaps the thing that would give to all of us the greatest satisfaction would be to go home with the memories that have been awakened and close a delightful evening and a memorable evening on that note. Throughout the points that have been mentioned tonight, three things have loomed, obviously, in the forefront of the thoughts of all of us here this evening. One is the memory of a man, the beloved founder of this great movement. A man who was wise above his fellows. A man who had foresight beyond his generation. Who saw in the trends of the times those things which we to a large extent have seen fulfilled in the development of not only provincial but world affairs since those early days. A man with an intense love for his fellows, especially for young people. I couldn't help but think of that wonderful group of young men and women from Crescent Heights High School who were singing here tonight young people with all that vim and vitality and exuberance of youth, how he would have delighted to see a group of young students like that as he knew them in his high school for so many years. Memories of a great man. Memories of a goal. I guess there are no really great men in life unless they have some outstanding goal or objective to which they direct their talents and their abilities. And Mr. Eberhardt, in his concern for young people especially and for the people of this, his province, saw in the desperate plight of those depression years a challenge to launch a crusade that would have as its goal the establishment of every citizen of this province in a position of dignity, a position in which they would be free from the worry and anxiety of economic insecurity, in which they could look forward to the future for their children with confidence and quiet assurance. That was a great goal, a worthy and worthwhile goal. But you can have a great man and you can have a worthy goal. But I think we've all learned from history that the achievement of his dream depends on more than he himself. For in human affairs you deal with human beings. Goals in that field are reached by the united effort are people who are inspired and moved by the one who gives birth to the idea. And in this province, and I know that Mr. Eberhardt himself expressed this so many times before his death, 
in this province his vision, his foresight, that gave birth to the goal that is the objective of the social credit movement, won the confidence, the allegiance, the devotion, and the support of the hundreds of thousands of men and women of Alberta in all walks of life who rallied behind him to make possible the crusade towards the goal which he saw before others because of his greater wisdom and greater foresight.